Okay, next series of uh, lectures here for Chapter 17, we're going to be talking about a uh, very important aspect of uh, blood physiology, and that is hemostasis, which uh, in general refers to how the body repairs damages to blood vessels and seals off those types of wounds so that you don't hemorrhage sort of important for your survival. And these processes uh, very much involve the platelets, so we're going to hear more about those particular cells here. And that's what we'll talk about first, first, first to get started here. Um, your platelets, all right, so down here, this is a diagram showing you uh, where platelets come from. They're made in the red bone marrow, just like your other formed elements of blood. So of course they um, are derived from those hemocytoblast stem cells we've talked about before. You know, some of those become myeloid stem cells. Some of your myeloid stem cells become these megakaryoblasts. And uh, these are committed cells that will now only proceed down the pathway to becoming platelets. They're not going to become any other type of uh, formed element in the blood. And then these go through a couple of additional changes. They become megakaryocytes. There are a couple of different stages that those go through. And then ultimately, what you can see here is these megakaryocytes. So it has a big nucleus in the center and then lots of cytoplasm surrounding it. And the cytoplasm breaks apart into uh, little fragments. And those are your platelets. Those are released into the bloodstream and they circulate around with your uh, red blood cells and your white blood cells. So basically what these platelets are, they contain granules on the inside. So when you see them under the microscope, if you can zoom in on one, they do look spotty like your granulocytes would. Um, but those granules contain a number of different factors uh, that are important for blood clotting, as we're going to see here shortly. You have a lot of these, about 150,000 to 400,000 for every milliliter of blood. ML there stands for milliliter. That's one one thousandth of a liter. One of the key things that they do is when you have a, and we'll see this shortly, when you have a tear in a blood vessel, they stick to the tear and help seal that off. That's called a, a platelet plug. They don't live very long. They last for about 10 days, and then you, um, they have to be replaced. So you're constantly cranking out new platelets, just like other types of uh, blood cells. There is um, a hormonal type um, chemical messenger that travels to the uh, our red bone marrow and signals for more of this to happen so you wind up with more platelets and that is called thrombopoietin since your platelets are also called thrombocytes. Alright so this process of hemostasis that we're going to be talking about it's a there are three major steps uh, that occur to form a blood clot and stop the loss of blood. And ultimately when we say a blood clot, what are we actually making? Um, a blood clot consists, see all this sort of yellow fibery type stuff that you see here? Um, those are called fibrin proteins and those fibrin proteins make a netting or a mesh or a web that traps blood cells, especially the red blood cells since they're the most abundant. And it actually contracts and squeezes out the, the fluid from those clumped up cells and this is what you actually have when a clot forms. It's mostly a bunch of red blood cells that have been trapped in this uh, fibrin mesh. Now to get to this you've got to proceed through three major steps that we'll be talking about. One of those is vascular spasm where a torn blood vessel spasms or contracts to help try to close off the injury. Then platelet plug formation, this is one of the key things that your platelets do. They come in and attach to tears in blood vessel walls and help seal off that opening. And then uh, finally, see my clotting is cut off over here. It should be blood clotting, not blood clotting. Um, blood uh, clotting is also called coagulation, and that's the formation of this fibrin mesh that traps all of those red blood cells. That's what more permanently seals off that wound um, so that it can wind up healing. These processes involve a number of different clotting factors. Um, most of these are proteins that are made by the liver and then there are lots of other chemical signals that get involved um, which are made by your platelets and also even your injured tissue secrete chemicals that tr trigger these processes. Hemostasis is a pretty complex 
topic. I mean, if you start reading about some of uh, like on the internet or something, you start Googling around for more details, it gets um, way more complex than what we're going to be able to talk about in this course. All right, here's an overview of some of those things I was just mentioning. Um, when you're experiencing blood loss, your blood is inside blood vessels, you know, many of which are microscopic. But when those get ripped open um, due to an injury, blood's flowing out. That can cause you to hemorrhage to dangerous levels if it's not stopped. So a very important part of our homeostasis is to quickly seal off these types of tears. All right, the walls of your blood vessels contain smooth muscle tissue. Those are involuntary or smooth muscle tissue is built from smooth muscle cells which contract involuntarily. You can't think about making those contract. So when you rip open a blood vessel like that, smooth muscle in those walls contracts or spasms to uh, try to reduce the, uh, the size of that opening. Then your platelets come along. Here are little platelets here in purple. And platelets are very good at recognizing ripped open blood vessel walls. And uh, one of the main ways that they do that is because in your blood vessel walls that you see here, yes, you have smooth muscle. Yes, you've got this epithelial lining on the inside. Remember, epithelial tissues line, uh, line and cover spaces, compartments. And then in between, you have connective tissues within the wall itself. So connective tissues, almost all of them contain collagen fibers. So when a blood vessel wall gets ripped open like this, it exposes collagen fibers and platelets stick to collagen. And so and once they start sticking, they send signals out to recruit other platelets to come in and they form a clump which helps seal off temporarily that rip in the uh, blood vessel wall. Now finally, to more permanently seal off that uh, rip in the blood vessel wall and to allow more time for healing to take place, coagulation gets triggered where you form this mesh of fibrin proteins that winds up trapping red blood cells and platelets and so forth and more permanently kind of seals off that, that injured area. All right, so just a little bit more about the first two steps in this process. So we said the first one, which happens essentially immediately, like if you got, um, if you, when you cut your skin open, it rips through a bunch of little microscopic blood vessels and the smooth muscle cells within the walls of those small blood vessels is capable of vascular spasm and that helps partially close or reduce the diameter of that tear so you don't lose as much blood and as you probably can imagine this is going to be most effective in a smaller more microscopic type blood vessel if you rip open like a major artery somewhere a uh, vascular spasm is not going to do that much towards sealing off of that that injury um, what triggers this injury as we just talked about you rip open the wall you're ripping open smooth muscle tissue um, endothelial cells so endothelium is a term you guys should know and endothelium is this epithelial lining oh, my stylus is not cooperating with me here epithe and endothelium oh come on so much for technology, I tell you. Uh, an endothelium is a single layer of flat epithelial cells, squamous epithelial cells, like you learned about in Biology 201, that forms the inner lining of blood vessels and then also the heart. Okay, so that is a, um, a special term for uh, epithelial tissues that are located in those areas. So those endothelial cells, when you have an injury through a blood vessel, they also secrete chemicals that help trigger, trigger vascular spasm. Platelets do this as well. And um, 
even pain reflexes, when you experience pain, pain is due to injury. You know, there are chemicals that are released from um, injured tissues that cause your sensory neurons responsible for pain to send action potentials up to your, toward your brain so that you have pain sensation. So some of those same reflexes that are involved in things like that also help trigger vascular spasms. All right, then our second phase is then, all right, so you're spasming your, uh, the tear in the blood vessel wall. Now we need to attract in platelets, which are going to clump together and form kind of a temporary seal over that opening. And this is called platelet plug formation. And this works through a positive feedback type process. So where it starts out with a little bit and then you get more and more and more and more and more until it goes to completion. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, whenever you rip through the endothelium inner lining of a blood vessel, it's going to expose connective tissues that are in the wall of the blood vessel itself. Okay, and so connective tissues contain collagen fibers. We'll play, all right, so if you got some collagen here, let's say those are some collagen fibers. And let's say here's a platelet. We'll put a P on there for platelet. Um, platelets have receptors on their surfaces which attach to a protein, which I'll kind of draw in there as a square, and that protein is called the von Willebrand factor, or VWF. So that von Willebrand factor forms a bridge between collagen fibers in the walls of blood vessels and the surfaces of platelets, so it helps bring those two together. And in fact, there are um, some types of bleeding disorders, people who aren't so good at, at clotting their blood and sealing off wounds, uh, in people who have, they lack von Willebrand factor, or they don't make normal amounts of von Willebrand factor. And in those people, the reason why they have trouble sealing off uh, tears in blood vessels is because they can't form these platelet plugs very well because they're lacking that BWF protein that bridges the collagen to the platelets themselves. Okay, when the platelets start sticking to the collagen, they change their appearance, they become spiked and sticky, and they start secreting a number of chemical messengers. One of those is actually ADP, and that's the same, that's adenosine diphosphate, like you learn with the ADP plus phosphate gives you ATP story. Here ADP is being used in a different way. You know, your body uses the same chemicals a lot of times for very different functions. So in this case, ADP gets released from platelets that have already stuck to the von Willebrand factor. And um, that then serves as a chemical signal to recruit more platelets to come over and stick to the platelets that are already attached to the collagen and so they start forming a clump. Um, and then there are a couple of other chemicals that they secrete also. Serotonin, and yes that's the same serotonin you learn about in um, uh, Biology 201 as a neurotransmitter. Here it's just being used for a different function uh, in the blood. And thromboxane A2 is another one. Those chemicals, what they do is they enhance vascular spasm and platelet aggregation. No, I don't want you to memorize ADP does this and serotonin and thromboxane A2 uh, do this, but I do want you to know that once platelets start forming, they attach to those ripped open walls in the blood, um, in the torn blood vessels through that von Willebrand factor. They start secreting various chemicals that enhance the vascular spasm, recruit more platelets in to form a clump um, and that's what we know of as our platelet plug. So you can kind of see how this is a positive feedback process. A few platelets stick initially, they start secreting chemicals that recruit more platelets, they stick, they start secreting chemicals that bring in more platelets, and so that's why it's a positive feedback process rather than a negative feedback type process. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, hemostasis I'm going to divide up into three different video clips. So the next one, 
we'll move on to the third phase, which is the most complex. And that's the actual coagulation where we're going to make this fibrin mesh that's going to trap red blood cells and more platelets and more permanently uh, seal off the tear in the blood vessel that has occurred.